back. Welcome back to Sports Wrap Live, everybody, on Sports Talk 790 and the iHeartRadio app. Shout out to Rat Pack all over the world tuning in tonight from your cars in H Town to your smartphone to your iPod life. However, you're living, thanks for checking in tonight. And if you miss the show, you can always check out our podcast on sportsraplive.com. That's rap with two Ps. And I was going to add to that audio and video. Absolutely. We have the best of both. Absolutely. Gon's been throwing the audio. Yes, or you can, you can go to the uh, Sports 790 website. Yeah, you get, get it from there. there. Too. Man. There's no excuse. No. No excuse. No. Why you can't listen iTunes? to it. iTunes? Yep. It's there, too. There you go. All right. Well, tonight is the State of the Union, State of the Sports Union. And uh, I want to talk about the state of the NBA right now in a lockout shortened season. Uh, and the NBA shortened season, or I should say off season, as expected, is taking a toll on some big names, including D. Wade. But that really hasn't stopped the Miami Heat because they've won eight of nine without D. Wade. And LeBron all of a sudden looks comfortable in Coach Spo's offense without number three on the court. Is anyone surprised that Dwayne Wade's hurt? He's yeah. always hurt. I, this isn't something new. This isn't because of the season. He's always hurt. And he's a guy that I see whenever I watch him. He's probably on the floor more than oh, any yeah. other NBA player. Like, he finishes going all out for every layup, every dunk. I mean, he takes – he plays very physical in the lane for a guy his size. I mean, that's why he's so good. But I'm not surprised at all that he is hurt. I'm not surprised also that LeBron has picked it up. LeBron has always been someone that can pick up the slack. You know, it's just the question of he can can he pick up that slack, you know, in the playoffs when it matters. Right. Cause yeah, because right, right now this doesn't matter. They're, they're gonna finish with a good record. Everyone knows that. Well, D, D Wade's gonna get healthy. His heel issue is gonna fix itself. Well, the perceived number two team in the East, of course, is the Chicago Bulls, and they they lost a big game last night to the Indiana Pacers team, who is much improved. There is no big game in the NBA regular season. I'm saying in there's not in context of diehard NBA fans. Yes, if you're a diehard Chicago Bulls fan. And this is a team that is breathing down your neck in your own division in Indiana, who nobody thought was going to get this kind of performance. This is a big far. deal for Indi for the, the Pacers. This is not a big deal for the Bulls. The Bulls are not going to, unless the Bulls see them in the playoffs. I, you know I, what I, the big deal is, Andrew? What's the big deal? Lou Al Dang going down. That's a big deal. That is a deal. big deal. That is a big deal. So, he's kind of a guy that's just offense for them. I'm not so much on the defensive end, but offense, he's going to be missed. He's a glue player. Yeah. He, he can rebound. He can shoot the three. He's a Duke player. He's smart. Uh, and I think they're going to miss him more than people are, are you know, more than people point. think. Yeah. Um, hey, how about this Philly team? Let's stay in the East Philly, you know, under Doug Collins. He's taken a young team and and really gotten some great things out of these guys. And imagine if they had had an actual better draft than what they got with Evan Turner. I mean, not that Evan Turner is bad, but, I mean, Evan Turner isn't, you know, when you pick that high in the, in the lottery, you kind of expect that, you know, it, it's a lottery, you know, for sure. No one knows what you're going to get out of these guys, but... I'm, I'm impressed with Philly. I mean, they, they turned it on last season, you know. There was a lot of talk if they should break up the team and whatnot, but they look pretty strong right now. Sure. Well, and props to Doug Collins. He's a, uh, he's a guy that really likes working with young talent. He, he loves coaching the Olympians. He loves coaching the college-type player. And so this young Philly team is perfect for him. Props to They're him. They're running the East. They're running the East. They're making the Knicks. I mean, the Knicks are making himself look bad. And listen, when you reference Mike D'Antoni, never call him Mike D'Antoni anymore. Call him the Pringle guy. Okay. The, the Pringles man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that, once that, you pop, you can't stop. Yes. Well, Pringle they, man. They need uh, they need something to pop up there because the Knicks are a debacle right now, Pete. I tell, you, I tell you one thing. Uh, Saturday night, the Houston Rockets will look like uh, the Chicago Bulls uh, of, of, of 96? 96 against the Knicks. And you know, yeah, I mean, listen, that's that's what they're doing. They're making they're making teams who may not even be that good uh, trash them. They're playing hard. I mean, I just don't – no chemistry at all. Well, here's a great point that Andrew brought up yesterday when we were having our, uh, our little pregame meeting. Uh, Denver – has played much better since the whole mellow trade went down, yeah. since the mellow drama, yeah. uh, than the New York Knicks could ever imagine playing. Well, the Knicks don't play defense. Who's surprised by this? Any coach, coach, you know, any team coached by Mike D'Antonio, Pringles man, does not play defense. It's not surprising that you know they don't. And even their best player doesn't play defense. Their second best player doesn't play even defense. Chandler, they got Chandler. I mean, what is he doing? What kind of defense is he playing? Well, he's the one that should be playing defense. Exactly. He's I'm better. Saying. But, I mean, you look at that team, their two best players, Mello, <coughs> Mallory. Mel, uh, Mello, and, uh, I mean, they're just, 
I don't understand why anyone should be surprised by this team that they're not playing defense. This is what they get what they deserve. Why? Well, and Dan Tony, Pringles man. Pringles man. Is, Pringles man is getting booed. Oh, every oh, night wait, in the garden. Wait, wait. Actually, in the garden uh, last week, they went from uh, uh, chanting uh, "Far Dia Tony" to uh, bring back Isaiah to uh, yeah. Phil Jackson to "Let's Go Giants." All in the all in the midst of about five, three to five minutes. Well, hey, that's that's about all they Not got surprising. to cheer for right now in New York, because if you think about it, their other New York football franchise is pretty much wrecked right now yep. with with the locker room and the coach situation and and, and him and the quarterbacks relationship. Uh, the Knicks are terrible. The Mets are terrible. The but Mets hey, suck. How about and how about your Yanks? Yeah, I mean Yankees. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm hoping they could. Uh, you know, I was just talking with DTI about uh, Jorge Posada was sad to see him retire. But like like uh, Andrew Martinez says, it's great to see someone play for one team that long and respect that legacy and then pack it up and, you know, basically have that career stay there. We'll talk some baseball later. Uh, there's some stories uh, nationally and locally that we need to get into. But, hey, let's take it over to the West. And, okay, now they want to build it, the Battle of L.A., the new battle. Uh, but who would have thought that Staples Center – would have at least this kind of buzz with the two teams there that play in Los Angeles. They do have a buzz, you know, they got the whole Lob City thing going. But to me, it's still the Clippers, man. It's, it's like Pepsi versus <laughs> Coke. You know, there's only one that can be Coca-Cola, and that's tried and true, and that's the Lakers. Then Tab, you remember Tab? You know what You know what the Clippers are? They're new Pepsi, they're, cl they're Crystal Pepsi. Crystal they're new Coke. I remember Crystal Clear. <laughs> yeah, that's what they are. They're that's Crystal, about three months. Crystal Pepsi, they're new Coke, you know. Yep. I just don't see it. I'm not buying it. So you don't like what they're doing out there? No, I think it's great. I just think that, listen, as long as the name on the front still says Clippers, this team is not going to have the ultimate success, I think, of making a legit run to a championship. I think they can make the playoffs. I think they're going to be an exciting team to watch. I think Blake Griffin is a really fun guy to watch as well. I think he's a great power forward. Maybe top two, you know, between him and, and uh, Kevin Love. But as long as that name says Clippers, I ain't buying it. Yeah, I was just going to say, just the funny thing with, you know, our test and the whole piece, just hearing, oh, Peace is having a fight. He's having a fight. Paul Gasol's trying to Well, you know, things, got, things got a little chippy last night. And oh, I'm, it was great. I loved it. I loved every second of it. I'm like, pretty sure. Like, Gasol was just trying to, like, rub his head like he's trying to get a fortune or something like that. You know, it was ridiculous. Dude, please, please do not bring up Paul Gasol because this is a family program and I do not want the FCC oh, knocking man. on my door. Do, do they still consider, uh, what is Ron Artest's new name? What are they called? Meta, Meta, World, Meta World Peace. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like most deaf. You know, Yassine Bey. I mean, I can't remember these names. To me, he's always Ron Artest. Yep. All right, well, hey, keeping it in the West, one of the hottest teams aside from last night, one of the hottest teams who, who's won now seven out of eight games is your Houston Rockets, Whoa. ladies and gentlemen. You know, hey. Mike Lowry. Man, your boy Kyle Lowry looks like an all-star. Lowry. Samuel Dallenbear apparently had some issues at halftime. He did. He had a bathroom break. He had to take to start the second half. Kind of hurt the Rockets' mojo because they had a lead and he got cut into. He ate too many enchiladas. He was like, ooh, man. <laughs> and then, up and he, right and then now. he has to, you know, get it out of his system by going to the uh, entertainment club last night. Well, look, they're reeling off wins. And this is a team that was left for dead in the hands of a Boston Celtic, which I was not comfortable with. But you know what? If he's got the team winning, if these guys are playing with determination, they're playing with pride, they're playing with hu hustle, and they're playing with effort, then, then you've got to love them. You, you have to love a Rockets team that just comes to play. This team could have packed it in and been sourpuss after the trade that didn't happen, and I probably would have cease and desisted from being a Rockets fan if, if Paul Gasol was in a Rockets uniform right now. Oh, man. I don't, I don't get your, your, your disdain for Gasol, but my point about the Rockets is this. <laughs> What's their best win in this little stretch run? I'm looking at the, the schedule right yeah, now. Yeah, that's something that me and Andrew were talking about. I mean, it, it's teams that they should beat, you know, and, but you're at the same time you're like, man, they don't have A-plus players. So it kind of gets over-exaggerated as far as the win value with them. You're like, oh, wow, they're on a win streak. But who did they play? It was basically a lot of teams under 500 or at 500. No one was really at the cream of the crop kind of thing. Yeah, I'd say probably their best win is San Antonio. They beat them once, and they lost to them once. I mean, but here are the wins. Charlotte, Sacramento, Portland, Washington, Detroit, New Orleans, San Antonio, Minnesota. There's like maybe, what, two playoff teams out of that whole list? Maybe three? I mean, Detroit is terrible. Washington's 
the, maybe the worst team in the NBA. New Orleans is terrible. Minnesota's terrible. What do they have? You know, Love, he's doing pretty good. You know, Rubio's kind of exciting. But most of these teams are bad. I'm going to be impressed whenever they start winning games on the road against good teams. Like, let's see when they go to Denver at the start of next month. You know, let's see when they go and take on a Memphis. You know, some of these uh, some better quality teams. Absolutely. Well, we want your thoughts on the Rockets, of course, and the NBA season. That is almost to the halfway point. We're going to blink, and all of a sudden it's going to be All-Star Weekend. Yeah, I know. It seems like it just started yesterday, Pete. I mean, listen, the game, I mean, uh, how many games are they playing? Is 40 games, 30 games? In the season? All-Star break was next week. <laughs> Pretty much. They had All-Star ballots out week one. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. How do you root? How, how do you vote for someone after, like, 13 games? Well, the same way you did last season, popularity contest. That's true. Or maybe let's see how many Twitter followers they have, maybe. Sure. Oh, is that what it's coming to? Of course. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, hey, if you guys want to chime in on any NBA talk, Hit us up on the Silverleaf Ghost Pepper Hotline at 713-212-5790. And uh, we got some people calling in to talk football. We are going to get back into the NFL at the top of the hour. So hang tight or uh, you guys call back at 9 p.m. Uh, but right now we got to take a minute to let you know that our broadcast this Sunday at Reliance Center for the H-Town Sneaker Summit is going to be brought to you by BC Smoke Shop who have two convenient locations in Houston. Yes, they do. Absolutely, absolutely. If you guys heard the spot, we are glad to have them aboard with the Rat Pack and Sports Rap Live. And um, we're going to have some giveaways from them, some wristbands, along with the sneaker tube wristbands we have on the table here tonight from Premium P, of course. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to cruise down Westheimer between Fondren and Hillcroft, or go out there at 1960 and Jones Road, check out BC's Smoke Shop. They're always open seven days a week, Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Sundays, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., and that's BC Smoke Shop, where quality matters. Why go anywhere else? Why go anywhere else? Absolutely. Tell them, Pete. Where do you go Where do you go in Brooklyn to get a nice, um, a nice functional glass piece? El Cabana. El Cabana, huh? Yeah, Park Slope in Brooklyn. They have a nice place over there that you can get some, uh, you know, leaves and cigars and stuff, but I'm not into uh, cigars. But I'll tell you one thing, there is a great niche of people that are into cigars, and uh, check out BC Smoke Shop. Absolutely, right here in Houston, Texas. Um, all right, let's get into the Martinez Report. Let's, let's keep it. it on the hard court. And uh, the Martinez Report, of course, is brought to you, as always, by... Me. Or... Or anyone that wants to sponsor it. That's right. ATI. That's one of the most popular segments here on Sports Rap Live. Of course, Andrew takes you around the world of college sports, fantasy sports, behind the scenes, stats, whatever you want from Andrew, he will deliver. And since it is our state of the sports union tonight, yep. uh, we're looking at 2012. Andrew, I heard you make a, a comment before the show that you're really kind of bored so far with this college basketball season. It is sort of a boring season, only in that North Carolina, who I think we kind of anointed before the season because they had all these players back, we were really too quick to judgment because really that team is, they got hot late last season and they didn't really do it the, the whole season to kind of show that they were an elite level, they could carry it the whole way. And so now that they've, you know, lost, uh, you know, Dexter Strickland, they've had a few losses, the mega loss to Florida State, it's, it, they've kind of lost the luster and no one's really picked it up. The Syracuse thing, it's one thing, you know, to be undefeated for a long time, now they've lost. That doesn't mean they're not a good team. They are a good team, but there's no star player on that team. There's probably guys that are going to play in the NBA, but there's no stud on that team. And also, Jim Beheim hasn't been doing a lot of interviews because of the whole uh, fine situation with his assistant coach and the allegations there. Kentucky really hasn't stepped up and, and solidified themselves. They have a lot of great players, but they're not John Wall, DeMarcus Cousin, like flashy, you know, getting everyone riled up. There's a lot of good players on that team, a lot of high NBA value uh, picks and players like that. But it's not really <laughs> doing it. Kansas is really flying under the radar because they don't have... Thomas Robinson is probably the player of the year, but he's not someone that's, I guess, a lot of name value or flashy. He's a power forward. That team really doesn't have a lot of other uh, name players as well. And Ohio State's kind of been flying under the radar too. I just don't feel like there's been an emerging storyline or something that's that's everyone's talking about or a team that everyone's talking about or a player that everyone's talking about. Well, speaking of the state of the sports union, you brought up Bayheim and not being able to do interviews yep. and not being able to do media. And a lot of that is due to a lot of these stories in sports, you know, that are, are a little uncomfortable. And, you know, the fine situation, whether the guy manipulated emails or, or doctored emails sure. is beside the point. The fact that it's coming out more and more with social media, coming out more and more, as a serious topic in sports, AAU presidents and college coaches 
Um, you know, it really kind of put a, a damper on the beginning of the season uh, for college college basketball in particular and the end of the college football season. Yeah, I think most of this stuff will get resolved, though, because in the next you know, week to two weeks, we're going to have the start of March. And once the start of March gets here, you know, it's March Madness, it's, to, it's a totally different season. It's almost two different seasons. It's, you know, getting into the tournament, and then after that, you know, making the run. Making the run. One team that continues to make the run is Murray State. I, I want you to talk a little bit about the Racers. They're 20-0, and 0, and my biggest thing about them right now is no one really knows how good they are. Where do you put them? They're undefeated. That's great. But their, their conference isn't very good in the Ohio Valley. If they lose a game, you I mean, it's... Their schedule's gonna do them no favors. If they lose a the game, it's, it's gonna make them look bad. You know, how did they lose to the, this terrible team? But if they go undefeated, it's like, who did they beat? You know, it, there's no real win, winning situation for them. I mean, should they, I, I don't even know what they should be rated as far as like a seed. You know, should they be like a four seed, a three seed? No, I, I really have no idea. It's, it's really tough because the teams they beat that were good, it was so early in the season, teams mature, teams change. The team that they're going to be at the end of the season is probably not that same team. They might have gotten better or for, or for worse, you know. But it's it's really tough to judge them. But they do have confidence. They've won tournament games before. I think this team should at least make it to the second weekend and get out, you know, to the Sweet 16 level. Well, look at what UConn did last year. They really were up and down throughout the regular season. You know, sure. they had Kimball Walker, of course, but they lost four in a row. Lost four or five there. Uh, really started clicking, kind of like the Giants do, yes, uh, at the end of the season, right when it was time. Yeah, no, they're, they're a team that's going to have confidence, and when you have confidence, you know, it, it can make up for a lot of other things as, as far as, you know, and the resume as far as talent and, what, and whatnot in coaching. Well, Andrew, let's look ahead, of course, Thursday nights, we like to look ahead at the weekend's action, and then wrap it up uh, on Sunday nights on sports wrap-up, Sunday wrap-up, um, but hey, let's start with Indiana. Indiana, they're playing tonight uh, at Wisconsin. Indiana, they've lost three of their last four. And that includes Minnesota, uh, Ohio State, and Nebraska. So it's they need to win this. Uh, they don't have to win this game. It's Wisconsin. Everyone loses at Wisconsin. It's just one of those places that's tough to play at. But they need to make a good showing to get the confidence kind of restored. They beat Penn State uh, the last game, but they really need to show, solidify something and show that they're they're a good team again. Because it can go quickly. It can really go quickly if you start getting in a losing slump and you, you kind of lose your way. And Indiana has been a team we've watched from the beginning. Yeah, they've really been surprising. They had the big win over Kentucky, the big win over Ohio State. And they lost to, um, they're playing them again now. So I'm sure that Ohio State has revenge on their mind tonight. All right, now Saturday we have Texas at Baylor. Yeah, Texas, they, they haven't been a very good team this year. But Baylor, I really want to see something from them because they've kind of been exposed for the fact that they don't really have that, I don't know what it is, but they don't have that it factor. The, the Perry Jones, he's just, he's maybe the highest lottery pick on that team, but they, he's just not a, a very energetic player that gets you really fired up. It's more Quincy Ace and some of the other guys there, so I don't know. I'm not really excited about the Baylor team. If you could give Rick Barnes one word of advice for this team this year, what would that be? Because we know you love Rick Barnes. That's uh, one word of advice would be, I don't, I don't know, that's really, really tough, but. Uh, Kill yourself? <laughs> no, 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 okay, no, no. Okay. Something like Firestarter, because he needs to do something to get this team, you know, get a fire lit onto this team. Because we've seen it before. He can coach a really good defensive team. They were with the number one ranked defense last year for a while. So, we'll see. All right, then uh, continuing with Saturday's top 25 action, you have West Virginia at Syracuse. Yeah, it's a big game. Syracuse, you know, they're the number one team, you know, or number two, uh, depending on, you know, maybe three or four, depending on where you have. They just uh, lost their first game of the season. But West Virginia plays really, really tough. They play great defense. So that's a big game. And then on Sunday, we have Michigan at Ohio State. Michigan and Ohio State, that's one of the great sports, you know, college rivalry, you know, no matter if it's football or basketball. That's right. And how are both of those teams looking right now? Michigan's having a good season. They're having a really good season. Uh, I think Ohio State is obviously more talented. I would have Ohio State, you know, in my probably my, my number one seeds overall, along with Kentucky, Syracuse, and maybe Kansas and Duke. They're, they're right there with me, right there on, the, on that line. So I'm looking for big things from Ohio State. Well, hey, just as much as you follow college basketball, like it's your religion, so does Fife Dog from A Tribe Called Quest. That's right. And I think we have Fife on the line right now. What's going on? What's going on? Great to hear that voice. Of course, we got uh, the Rat Pack in the building. Uh, we got my man Premium Pete from Sneaker Tube TV. He's sitting here at the table. All right. What up, Fife? Hey, hey. All right. Uh, so Fife, of course, joins us uh, each and every show to give us his Fife's Five. And that's a look at, you know, different topics from around the world of sports. And Fife is our special correspondent who checks in. 
whether he's in the ATL up there in New York or out there in the Bay, he's going to check in with us here on Sports Wrap Live. And Fife, since we're talking college basketball, we want you to give us your five most overrated teams right now in the top 25. Five overrated teams in the top 25. Um, at number five, I got to go with UCLA. They're really not saying much right now. They were supposed to be so great. I believe they were at least number 15 when the season started. I'm not sure what they are now, but me personally, I'm not feeling them. At number four, I have to go with Memphis Tigers, who started the season um, number eight on the poll. Well, hey, Bun just said it. you should have seen that coming. <laughs> well, it's funny because you know what? You ride or die with North Carolina. And uh, we, got some, we got some nice promo items from Slam Magazine. Of course, uh, Mo Bob, you guys have had the opportunity to chat here on Sports Wrap Live together. Um, but I opened up the box and they had some back issues. And it was kind of a, a nudge at the NBA. It says, uh, who cares about a lockout? And they had North Carolina. This was back in December. They had North Carolina on the cover. So for you to, for you to put them at the top, I mean, you must be disappointed in this team. Now, if you could... If you could, if you could give Roy Williams one word of advice uh, in his office to to fix this team, what would it be? Yeah, what do you think about that injury? Five, five, what do you think about that injury to Dexter Strickland? He's going to be gone for the season. What do you think that does to their defense, and what do you think that does for their chances to make a, a run at the Final Four? What, do you think the light's ever going to come on for Harrison Barnes? I mean, I've been waiting pretty much a season and a half now for this guy to turn it on. He did at times last year. You know, you could see it. He would take over games with three-pointers to win big games. But this season, I, I just don't see it from him. We talked about that, Fife. Well, hey, we got 30 minutes or 30 seconds before we go to break. We appreciate you calling in. You got one last thing, Andrew? Yeah, Fife, we're going to be looking forward to hearing you when we talk about Duke versus North Carolina. It's coming up on February 8th, so that's going to be a huge game, I know, for everyone. Where are they playing at Duke? That's going to be uh, at North Carolina. Oh, we got time. We got time to discuss that. We'll look forward to that game. We look forward to hearing from you on Sunday, Fife. 
Appreciate you checking in, man. We got to go to break. Thank you guys for tuning in right here on Sports Talk 790 Sports Wrap Live.